what you learn about Justin last week? Oh, yeah, I think he made uh, some real big strides and made more plays, which I think that'll happen each week as we kind of go through things. Uh, uh, really just some nice things with the football. I mean, uh, everybody's going to talk about that last throw, but there were uh, a bunch before that that he made really nice strides. Well, there's still stuff we can improve on, but I think he uh, showed some really good things. You've obviously coached a lot of quarterbacks in your day. Is there anyone that he, he reminds you of? Um, he's kind of a combination. He's really a very headsy. He has a lot of, I mean, kind of natural football skills and things. Uh, uh, kind of very similar to when I first coached Chase Daniel. It's kind of just he, just, he doesn't over stress. He doesn't overthink about it. Doesn't over analyze it. Just kind of get out and plays. And lets it kind of come to him and everything. And that's that's a, that's a good way to be, especially for a young player and everything. So that, and then, I mean, he made a bunch of big throws in that game for us. And uh, I mean, some really good scrambles and some, did some really good things that way. So we just got to kind of keep using that and just to, if we can get him to start a little faster, I think we're, we're, real, we're real happy. Because he is a young quarterback, I, he's probably taking some of these losses a little bit harder. Uh, he was obviously emotional after the, the loss to Cal. How do you make sure you can keep that in check? Well, I mean, I talk, I talk to him about why it's, I mean, why it feels like this. Because, I mean, it's a, because you put so much into this, you've worked so hard at it. Um, each week he's preparing harder than he's ever prepared to be a quarterback. And then when it doesn't work out, you don't have success. And, I mean, it hurts more, which uh, that's kind of being expected in, in that way. And, and I go, this is what we got to do is we got to find a way to do more next week. And if he can improve from the Washington game to the Cal game and improve that much again this week and just keep doing that, we're going to be uh, we're be in good shape. Where do you see his biggest jump from the Washington game to the Cal game? Well, I think uh, his uh, kind of his pocket presence and kind of making some of the more in-pocket uh, intermediate throws and everything. It still missed a few of our downfield throws, which it's funny. I mean, he missed he missed a couple long, missed a couple short. So it wasn't like he was he was aiming it too much, or he was or he was throwing it too far out in front of the guys. I think it's just continuing to get reps with DC and Charles and Jalen and getting those guys. So he feels and he knows where they're going to be when he throws the ball, especially kind of down the field throws. But I mean, I thought some, there were some big intermediate down the field, middle of the field, outside kind of corner route type throws. That, that, Really, really good for us. Have you seen a true freshman quarterback like play this well in all the all the quarterbacks that you've coached, or at least um, I mean, I mean, some of them probably haven't had the opportunity to play as early as he has. But well, he's my he's the first true freshman I've had to have played extended and started the game. Um, but I mean, I'm. I'm kind of ecstatic with where, what he's done up to this point. I mean, we always have things we want him to do better. I mean, we went through that video and pointed out probably 20 things that he could do better in that. And, and he's he's as highly critical of himself as anybody. But uh, there were a lot of really good things. And I mean, for the most part, I think he put us in a position that we had a chance in that football game. And that's what you, you kind of want from the quarterback. What was your message to him when he obviously threw that final interception? Great game, but I'm sure that, like you said, he took it pretty hard. Looked like guys went over and picked him up. What did you just kind of say to him in the locker room after that? Well. I, this, we're going to learn from this. I mean, it's not going to be the. I mean, every quarterback that's ever played the game, every great quarterback that's ever played the game has had one of those happen. I mean, from the guys who are in the Hall of Fame and the great, the best ones in the NFL, the best ones in college, that happens. I mean, everybody has kind of that in their resume at some point. And we kind of, I told him, well, we got yours out of the way. We'll learn from that. And we won't let it happen again and everything. And he'll learn from it. But, and everything he does, every play we run in a game is kind of a learning experience for him and, and all he can kind of take from it. Coach, I know you were uh, there last year when the whole sheet, uh, all the sheets came out against Arizona State. But what did, what did you guys have to watch in State think about the sheets? Was that an effective strategy for Oregon last year? Uh, I don't know if it was effective. I, I know we saw it because we played them the week after. So we got to kind of see it and we watched it in that game. Was a, I think it was a Thursday night game, so we actually watched it on TV. And I, I was kind of giggling the, kind of the sheet thing and everything. But no, it is a, I mean, it's a, a situation where you want to make sure you're doing everything you can to put your guys in a position to be successful. So whatever uh, whatever that takes, but uh, it's just a kind of a different approach. I've seen you know, line up a bunch of guys. So it's like a tunnel that you're signaling out to, so no one can see it on the other sideline. I mean, I've seen so many different ways to kind of do it. I've, seen, I've been involved where we change some of our signals and some of our code words to try to protect that and everything. But it's just uh, you have to do what's best and make sure you go out and execute. Do those changes it, come from like the head coach level, or is it pretty much everyone on offense? Who, uh, who, you know, decides uh, get a week that that needs to be, you know, satisfied. Well, I mean, we talked about it, the whole staff and the coach helped to make the final decision on that. If we need to do something that we're going to do anything a little bit different. I don't know of anyone in this room yet or that, or I haven't been uh, in that meeting to find that out. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. no, we'll do whatever we can to kind of protect them.
Yeah, I was just gonna follow up if you guys had had any plans so far to uh, try to protect your signals against ASU. Uh, I don't know of any that we've done, but I'm sure uh, Coach Health will have something in mind. He kind of joked around the other day about uh, we were dreaming about doing smoke signals, <laughs> start a little fire on the sideline <laughs> and everything. But um, that, but we were just kind of joking around about it after the uh, Coach Leach things last week, so it was more in, in jest than anything. We'll, we'll see on Saturday what we do. What did you see in that interaction, if you saw, between uh, Coach Leach and Todd Graham <laughs> after the game? I just, I mean, I really, I was watching the game at home with the, the kids and just kind of saw them go by each other and uh, saw Coach Leach didn't say a lot. He kind of moved on, which is probably the, the best way to handle anything like that because there's, there's no winner, no loser in that whole situation. It's best just to get it over with as, as quick as possible. What does Arizona State bring defensively challenges they present? Uh, they're really, uh, really good against the run. I mean, one of the best teams in the country against the run, and they've kind of done that from, uh, with their pressure. And uh, they're a heavy pressure team. Uh, they're the heaviest pressure team we've seen this year. So that'll be a, a challenge for our, not just in the pass game, but in the run game. They, they blitz the run probably as well as anybody in the country. And I think that's where they really made a lot of work this year. I mean, they've held two teams under in the negative rushing. Uh, Washington State, UCLA, and it, it was due to sacks, but they didn't run the ball enough with the running backs to get enough yards that way to get them out of that situation. So being able to get our run game uh, going against them to keep them honest and then be able to take some shots. But when you when you blitz, it's a high risk, high reward type thing where um, sometimes they get us and sometimes we get them, and it's a different mindset for a quarterback. Um, you don't watch Arizona State and see a lot of 10, 12, 15, 14 play drives against them because of what they do defensively. So you got to be there and you got to take advantage of the, the opportunities. And the, when you get a shot down the field, you got to hit it and kind of take advantage of that because otherwise they're going to get you at some point too. How has Justin done in reading pressures and reading blitzes so far in two games? That's a small sample size, but. Well, uh, it's been real small. And then I think Washington blitzed us, I believe it was like three times. And then uh, uh, Cal blitzed once. So, and it was a run play when they did blitz. So, I mean, he. He's not really been put in that position at this point. Now we, we spend way more time on that video than we do on a lot of the other video because if you can't handle pressure, then you can't right. can't run the offense. So we spent a lot of time this week and we'll continue and giving him the best kind of plan of action and working with the old line to make sure we can get our our five and six count the tailback on, on who their six are that's coming so we can get the ball down the field. Thanks, Is that it?